What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be working on the Advanced Minimap System Part 2. So really what we're working on is allowing the player icon to show up on the minimap in the top right. So we had this working in the basic minimap system, but we now have this customizable advanced minimap system where we can basically stylize our minimap and display or not display certain things that we want on it. It's also better performance wise. But we need to make sure that the things we had working in the basic community map, such as the player icon, are still working on this new and advanced method. So to do such a thing, what we're going to do is essentially grab the player's data. So you can see I'm going toward the back corner here. And as I rotate my character, the uh, image in the top right, the player icon rotates as well. And it also follows the location. So it's placed in the center where the uh, material for the minimap is actually trying to move and orient itself around. In short, what we're going to be doing is making the player icon on the minimap be representative of what the player is actually doing or the character is actually doing. Okay. So we're going to get started today, but before we do, I just want to let you know that this is episode 36 of the Action RPG tutorial series. And so if you want to get caught up in everything we've done, we have plenty more episodes to go. You can stay current with this playlist right here in the top right corner. If you click that, you can check out every episode we've done in this tutorial series. And you can also check out a few additional ones that I think are just helpful for this game. I will also link this iCard right here, which is the iCard to the previous advanced minimap episode where we set up the customizable and uh, stylized minimap section. All right, with that done, we can continue on to the episode. So we don't have anything in code today that we need to do, so you can stay in the editor the entire time. And we are going to edit a few things to support this method. So remember before we had the basic minimap and we had, it was just basically a camera that was looking down at the world. So we had things like the player icon and we could actually force the, the player icon to be represented there since it was a basic minimap and it was just looking at the character and we were replacing it with the icon. But now things are a little bit different. This minimap that you see in the top right is now traversing through a material essentially it's going over this texture that we have, comparing points that are in the real world to uh, what's being represented by the uh, minimap in the top right. So like the camera is actually moving, not because we're moving our character so much, but because we're literally moving and adjusting where the minimap is located on the texture, on this material. And so because of that, we don't have a concrete location that we could just put our player icon and be done with it. What we should do instead is put our player icon in the center since the minimap is based around the center point anyway. Have it rotate based on the character's rotation and then add the icon on top of the minimap. That part's important because this is now that this is not just a camera, we don't have depth to it. So we can't just add the player icon onto it. We have to overlay it. There's actually something in Unreal that's meant for exactly this. So we're going to be using that today. So with that out of the way, let's go into the actual logic. We have our minimap logic here, or our assets here. So we have our material instance that we were using on our minimap widget. And then here is how I was able to get it. Here's the image that came from it. And here are our variables. We don't have to actually change anything with those today. I'm just kind of reminding you because when we go into the widget here, you're going to see that we had the minimap image. Okay. And so the minimap widget or the minimap image here is going to be essentially, it was just covering this entire canvas panel. Now, that's perfectly fine. That was doing the trick. However, we can't put anything over top of this. This is in widget space or screen space. And so in this case, when we had this on the canvas and we applied it on the HUD, because this image was on our character HUD, then without putting a player icon on top of this and changing the Z order, there would be no way to actually see these uh, widgets on top of each other. They'd be fighting for each other. They'd be fighting to render. And so the problem with that is if we try and spawn all the the icons that we'll need on our HUD, it's going to get very busy really quickly, and we're going to have to hide and unhide ones as they come, as they go within range of the mini map, or if we have a bigger map, and you know a map that you can open up and look through and zoom in and out, that stuff is going to happen 
uh, you know, it's going to be rendering what it needs to based on what is in within the range. So we don't want to hide everything that's not within the range at the start, but spawn them. That would be bad for performance. So instead, what we're going to do is leave this alone. Leave the minimap that's on the HUD alone. We're keeping it zero to zero. We're not spawning additional widgets on top of it. We're going to use this overlay widget. So we had the image here, and it was a child of the canvas panel. What I've done is I've gone in the palette, searched for an overlay, brought it as a child of the canvas panel. I already have one, so I'm not going to do it. When you do that, you're going to get this right here. I went ahead and anchored it whoops, to this guy right here at the bottom right, which is the entire uh, space of the widget. Okay, And then I have also gone ahead and changed the offset right and bottom to be zero. They're normally 130, but if you do that, it'll look like this when you do that anchor. And you'll have missing space here, which we don't want. So instead, I offset everything to zero, and then it takes up the entire space. So that entire section we had on the character HUD is going to be filled by this overlay. And so while it's filled by the overlay, we need to figure out what we want the overlay to be filled with because we're going to be able to put things on top of this now. That's the whole point of the overlay is we'll be able to put icons on it and actually add some depth to the widget and to the image itself. So specifically what we need to do is this is our overlay. I called it minimap overlay. It is a variable. Make sure you check that because we're going to use it in the blueprint. And then instead of having just the overlay and the image separate, even though that technically will work visually, we want to make sure that, again, the icons are going on top of this. So what I'd recommend is making the minimap image a child of the overlay and making it span the entire overlay. The way you do that is you just add the horizontal and vertical alignment at the vertical and horizontal fill. If you do these other things, you can do different things with them, like I can center it, left align, right align, whatever. But this is the fill. If I do this, it takes up the entire overlay, which is what we want. The entire size of the overlay should be taken up by the image. The other things will be added after the fact. So basically, long story short, add an overlay, child the minimap image to it, fill it in so that the image takes up the entire overlay and make sure the overlay takes up the entire widget space. Now, with that, what we can do is we can actually go through and add items onto the overlay. So we can add our player icons and our other icons onto the overlay and show it on top of the image. But to do that, we need another widget that we can spawn. So before we go into the graph, let's go and create a new widget. I've already created mine, but you can go right here to create a new one. And I called it the player icon. Now the player icon, what it is, is essentially just an image that I have here. And it stores the icon we made for the basic minimap for the player. Okay. So let me show you how I set it up. You can set up a few different ways. But this is what I did. I added an image, which you can find under common. Just brought it onto the screen. It's just a child of the canvas panel. Now, uh, I have defaulted it to a, a few things because this is what I liked. So let me explain because this is completely, you can vary this and you can change how everything looks here. So first things first, when you add an image, it's going to be a certain size. It's most likely not going to work with the size that you have set up for the minimap player icon. Like if I were to look at the image size, the default image size I have for this icon is 371 by 389. That's great, but the image is not that size, so that doesn't really assist me in any way here. So what we've done instead is I've gone ahead and clicked size to content, and it will then make the image widget as big as the image that is being supplied by this brush here. So as we change the size of this, then the size of the image widget changes. Now, 24 by 24 is just the value that I chose because I thought it looked good but it's pretty arbitrary. So you can change this to whatever value you want. Um, if I make it something like 64, 64, then when I play the game, it's going to be much larger. Notice how it's now offset. It doesn't actually match up with where we're at. This is because of where I placed it in the widget. So we want the image to be centered on this widget. We either want to take up the entire widget or we want it to be centered within this widget. Either will work in this case. So I went with the centered method, but if you're familiar with uh, 
other ways of doing this, feel free. I didn't do this for any reason on purpose, just because I thought it was the most convenient. So to center this widget, you see how it's not really in the center? You have these lines that kind of guide you. This is the middle line, okay? And you can tell it's not centered there. It's close. What I've done is I've anchored it to the middle, okay, to the center. Now, when I anchor that, you're like, why is it not in the center? Like, we just hit that anchor center. The problem is it puts the top left of the image in the center. So if I were to get rid of these positions, okay, you could see that the center of the image, where this is, this is the center right here, is where the top left of our actual image is. That's how it works. But we don't want that. We want the center of the icon to be in the center of the mini map. So what we need to do is take the size that we give this. Let's change this back. I'm, I like 24 as the size, uh, but if you want to work in uh, good powers for images, you know, 32, 64 are going to be good. So you can use them if you'd like. I like 24 as the actual image here, uh, image size here, because I thought it looked the best, but it's up to you. See, it's not centered, okay? But what you can do to get anything in the center once you anchor it to the center is that you just take half of the x and half of the y and subtract it so we have 24 size x so if i subtract by 12 it's going to get the center of the player icon in the center of the widget and then same with the vertical element so we can subtract 12 from it since it is 24 on the y and now it will be in the center vertically of the widget and now our image is directly in the center so when we apply it to the minimap, it will also be in the center of its parent, which is going to be, yet again, overlaid here. In the graph, we need to figure out a method we can use to actually rotate this when we are uh, moving around. Because when we, when we move, it can follow it based on where the minimap is, but it won't rotate if our character rotates on its own. It's not really dependent on the character at all at this point. What we can do is actually just use our event tick, which uh, you can, this will all be in here by default the first time you go in the graph, but if you get rid of everything like I do, you can just simply search for event tick, grab it, and we're going to do something pretty simple here. We are going to get the owning player pawn of this widget, which I'll explain a little bit more in a second, and we are going to get the rotation of that pawn, and then set the transformation of this image based on that value. This will allow us to rotate and allow the player icon to rotate with it. So, why does this work? So the owning player pawn is the owner of the widget. Now, we never set an owner of this widget, not yet, but we're going to pass one in when we create it. And it's going to be the owner of the minimap widget that we pass into it. And so the owner of the minimap should be the character that owns that HUD. So in our case, the character that we're playing as owns this HUD. So anything that is owned by this HUD should also own the minimap and the player icon. So we get our owning player pawn. We cast it to the appropriate type. It's technically not necessary that you do this you could just get the active rotation based off of that but i do like to make sure that we are doing it for the right character this third person tutorial character is our base code class and so all of our characters will be a child of this in one way or another and because of that then i know that this type will work for all instances from there it's really simple i can get the actor rotation I can then break the rotator value or split it by right clicking on the return value, clicking split. And I literally just played around with these until I found the right one because I couldn't remember which one was on the uh, screen space that we wanted to rotate. It is the Z when dealing with Unreal's widget space. Okay, so once you get these three, you then have to do something to set the actual image here. We can't just rotate this, believe it or not. It's a little weird, but it doesn't have like an actual rotation. The closest thing you have to it are the pivots and the transform values. So you can like change the angle. Um, if I get that out, out of there, see I can change the angle of the icon. 
through the transform and it changes it here. There's no like rotation, it's just this angle. So that's what we're going to be setting. That's where it comes from. And so we grab our icon image. Uh, this image should already be a variable by default, but feel free to click it and make sure that it is. And then just grab your icon, search for set render transform angle. And for the angle that you want to pass in, you pass in the Z from the get actor rotation. This has to be run on tick or has to be run on a function that is called as frequently as this can update. However, this can update every frame currently because the character can rotate every frame. So there you go. Now the player icon is set up, but we have to add it to the mini map to, before we can see anything working. We need to make sure it is on the overlay and that it can also be spawned and created using the right method with the right owner to grab the appropriate data. So let's go back to our minimap widget and we're finally able to go to the graph. Everything in event tick is stuff we already had. This is actually covering the movement of the, basically the camera and the panning over the texture. But what's different is the stuff in event construct. We didn't have event construct before. So go ahead and pull up event construct if you don't already have it. So if I could type, which I can't right here. What we need to do is create the widget and then add it to the overlay. This is very simple. These are all Unreal supported methods. So we get the owning player of this widget. When we created the minimap in the game mode, we had already assigned the owning player. So the owning player of the minimap is already assigned and we can pass that along as the owning player of the player icon. Again, that's important because we're using that owning player pawn to get the rotation to know that we can rotate the player icon based on the direction the character is facing. So we need to do create widget from class, actually just create widget, excuse me. And then we need to select our player icon. And then we can pass in the get owning player. Okay, that's what we've done here. So now we have our widget being created. It will exist and you might even be able to see it. Uh, if you add it to the screen, that is, you'd have to add it to the screen. But it won't be in the correct spot because even though we've set up the player icon to be in the center of this canvas, when it gets added to the overlay, it gets added to the origin, which is the top left. So to fix this, we have to manually set it to be in the correct spot. So first things first, let's add it to the overlay. There's only one way to do this. I'm using the Unreal uh, functionality for overlay. So we just grab our overlay call add child to overlay. You can add just the child, but that's actually a little bit different. Add child to overlay is what will allow you to simply add it and um, have it spawn at the top left as opposed to adding it in the hierarchy and doing some other things. Then you're going to return the widget directly into it. So the target is the minimap overlay. The content is the widget that we're adding. At this point, you'll be able to see it in the top left. So if I didn't do this, you would see that the mouse or the player icon is there in the top left and it does rotate properly, but it doesn't actually go to the center of the minimap. It's not what we want in this case. Very, very simple way to fix this is we can just set the horizontal and vertical alignment just like we do with any widget when we're manually adding it. It's just here we're adding it late, so we have to do it through the blueprint, not on the graph. Okay, so you can add the return value of the, uh, ob basically the object that is being returned here. Okay, it's returning the, the reference to the slot on the overlay. So basically a child of this uh, will be the player icon then it this returns the slot that it was added to. So we're basically grabbing the slot that is a child of this overlay at the location we just added the player icon. And that's the one we want to set the alignments on. So you can just simply type set horizontal alignment and set vertical alignment off of this return value. Once you do that, make sure you're in horizontal alignment is center for both of them. And once you're done with that, it will appear in the center of your minimap and it will rotate as your character rotates. From there, we're good. 
There are plenty of other things we're going to add. We'll add them in the next episode. So we're going to add objects like armor, weapon pickups, and be able to show them on the map. But we will also be able to add enemies and show like red cursors and red enemy icons on the map. You can use similar methods, so feel free to try and go about that now. But otherwise, we're going to cover all of this in the next episodes of the Advanced Minimap Tutorial Series. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. I really appreciate it. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to my YouTube membership and Patreon supporters and subscribers. Thank you guys for everything, for all the love and support, and for being excited to watch these tutorials every single week. Thank you so, so much. If you have any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. It is completely free, and I'd be happy to help you with any issues you ran into. Like I said, guys, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.